Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest 8 second gaming and in today's video we're going to be talking and breaking down the different roles in Apex that you can start to find a playstyle that matches with you. Because you need to be playing a character that matches the role that matches your playstyle in order to best succeed in the game. If you are not matching them up then you are not playing your character to their strengths and you're going to be losing RP because of that. But by the end of this video you will understand exactly which role you are going to be looking to play. But if you guys are here, it's very obvious that you're looking to take your Apex skill to the next level. And if that's the case, then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Over there, we have top level coaches creating up to 10 guides a week that are all site exclusive, so you will not find them anywhere else. We got legend guides, gun guides, VOD reviews, and much more. So no matter what you struggle with as a player, you will be able to find a solution. So if you're looking to climb to Diamond, Masters, or even Predator, click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership, or I'll steal all the batteries in your house. But okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about roles and playstyles. And there are four main roles on a team technically. You have Entry Fragger, Secondary Fragger, Support, and kind of IGL, but that's kind of different at the same time, and we will get into why that is when we talk about the IGL. But you need to understand that each of the different roles have a different playstyle and different legends that fit into those things. So let's kick this off with the Entry Fragger. Now these are the first into the fight. They are the one who is drawing all of the fire from the enemy team to create an opening for their teammates to be able to push up without taking much damage. Now Entry Fraggers are typically very flashy players because they do need to have pretty good movement and game sense to be able to stay alive long enough for their team to actually get up to them. If you have no idea what you're doing in a fight, you're going to be easily singled out, downed, and killed before your teammates are actually able to get to you and start to help out. That's why typically entry fraggers need some form of movement to help their team get in and out as well. Perfect examples of entry fraggers are Wraith, Octane, Ash, and sometimes Valkyrie. Now Valk and Ash are the flexible ones. They do fit into both the secondary fragger and entry fragger roles because they can change into what the team needs. They have really good team mobility, but also they can help lock people down with their tacticals, so they do fit both roles. That's why I said sometimes Valkyrie. But if you're looking to become an entry fragger, you have to be very self-sufficient in fights. You are going into most of them blind. You will not have a lot of information until your team catches up to you and you can get that information from them. That's why in fights you need to be very calm and comfortable because you need to be the one that's drawing fire and keeping your team safe. If you are a very panicky player and you blow something like a wraith phase in the middle of a fight, then the enemy team won't have to be focused on you. They can switch their attention to your teammates and get them killed before they are even actually able to get to you. Now an entry fragger who plays this role correctly can open up a ton of opportunities in fights. But you also have to be willing to trust your teammates 100% of the time. You need to be trusting that they will make the proper callouts on enemies repositioning and you also need to trust the fact that they will be following up on any space you make or any damage you pump out. As an entry fragger you always want to be putting your team first and make sure that all your choices are based on what's best for them. Because they can't really get out of the same situations that you can. You can't blow a portal or a jump pad just for kicks or because you wanted to. You need to make sure that you always have a way for them to get to safety as well. But if this sounds like you, congratulations, you are now an entry fragger. So with that we can jump into our second role, the secondary fragger. Now if you're coming from another game like Valorant, this is the most equivalent to the initiator role. These guys are the ones that are setting up a lot of the kills and gaining information with their abilities. Now the secondary fragger does cover most of the legends in Apex. For the most part, every legend can technically fit in this role because it is very versatile. But right now in the meta there are some best legends to be picking from. If you want to have scans, Bloodhound or Seer, because the scans give out a ton of information and fights on enemy positions. That then allows your team to position properly, potentially even pre-fire around corners, or just know who is singled out and easily jumped on. With all this information and fights it's very hard for your team to get caught out because you know exactly where the enemy team is playing. And that's why Seer is a very popular legend right now, because it's very hard to lose a fight when you have constant wall hacks. But if you're more of an aggressive player, you can potentially pick up Horizon or Mad Maggie. These two have kits that's basically all about running and gunning, killing a team insanely quickly before they even have a chance to react to you. Any little bit of damage that you pump out during the fight can be taken advantage of very quickly and very easily with these two. And on top of that, they can make a lot of places unplayable in the fight as well, making it very hard for the enemy team to stop and heal up because a lot of the spaces that they're trying to play are not safe. But if you're looking for team utility, maybe try picking up Valkyrie 
Valkyrie or Loba. These two offer mobility in fights to help you take off angles and end fights quickly, but they also offer more utility to the team with their ultimates. Valkyrie allows you to extend fights without having to worry about it because you can just alt and get to zone, and Loba you don't have to be worrying about looting too much because no matter where you are she can throw down her ultimate, you can get ammo, armor, anything like that, and it's a very good help for the team but you're also aggressive in the secondary position. Now in fights you don't typically want to be in the front because you're looking to be able to get your abilities out so you can help take over the fight and control the flow of things. Your positioning should be closer to the support when the fight starts. Your entry fragger will be off doing their own thing but supports can easily be singled out if you're not careful. So at this point you're technically a babysitter to them until they have to babysit you. It is kind of a two-way street with the babysitting thing. But also secondary fraggers are the ones who are cleaning up most of the kills. As your entry fragger runs in, gets a good amount of initial damage out, you are the one to come in, use your ability to gain information, and clean up any of the damage that they've done. That's why typically on pro teams you see most of the time the secondary fragger will be a controller player, because they want to be very confident in taking isolated 1v1 fights as soon as the fight has been kind of started, and at that point you don't need to be beside your support anymore because the fight has kind of drawn out a little bit, and your support is going to be doing their own thing which we will cover in a second. Now if you're a player that does want to be killing people but at the same time helping your team, you're probably a secondary fragger, because they do have support-like tendencies with getting their abilities out, but they're still very aggressive. So if that sounds like you, congrats, you're a secondary fragger. But now we can jump into the role that nobody really wants to play but everyone wants on their team, the supports. This role is less concerned about pumping out massive amounts of damage and killing people and more concerned about keeping their team alive. A support will always be in the back line of the team, giving your buddies a safe space to fall back to if they need to heal. In a fight, you're always going to be looking to lock down a little spot of your own so that if your teammates take massive amounts of damage and the Wraith needs to phase back to you, you have a spot for them to do so. Now the legends for this role are Gibraltar, Caustic, Newcastle, Watson, and Vantage. Technically, Lifeline does fit in here too, but she is very, very, very weak in the current meta, so I do not recommend playing her right now. That may change in the future, but for right now, just stick with the other ones that I mentioned. Now, every legend in this role is built around helping their team. Gibraltar Dome, Newcastle Alt, Caustic Gas, Watson Fences, everything like that, and they all play a role in providing areas for your team to safely play if need be. Now, as a support, you never want to be the focus in a fight. You can easily be targeted because you pretty much have no no mobility as a support character and you don't want to blow a game changing ability because of poor positioning. If you are forced to use your Gibraltar Dome, that is a huge ability that you just technically wasted, and the enemy team can take advantage of that very easily. So the support players very much need to be aware of where they are in fights more than any other legend or any other role. But there are some times where supports have to be aggressive, so if you have to do that, you should be looking to stick onto your secondary fragger. They are usually easier to be with and you can help lock down the enemies with them as your entry fragger is off doing their own thing. Now as a support, you aren't as focused on using your abilities because they're more for when your team gets knocked or close to it. So you should always be having guns that cover multiple ranges. That way, no matter where your teammates are, if they need help, you'll be able to help shoot for them. Now, I myself typically do play the support role for my team when we're playing ranked or in tournaments. So if you want to watch a support player do something like that, come check out one of my streams sometime over on Twitch TV slash 8 Second Gaming. But now we have to cover the IGL role or in-game leader. Now, at the beginning, I did say it's not technically like the other roles because this one goes on top of something else, so everyone can potentially be the IGL, though it is usually done by the entry fragger because they're the ones in front and they see the most that's going on. But if you want to be an IGL, you have to be wanting to be a person that's thinking of everything in the game. You need to be willing to plan out rotations, fights, endgame spots, any little tiny detail of the game you need to have thought of in order to actually be a good IGL. If your teammate says, hey, what are we doing now, you cannot be thinking, uh, 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 uh I don't know. You have to always have a plan and if that plan falls through you have to have a backup plan and if that plan falls through you gotta have another backup plan and it doesn't stop there because you also need to be confident if you aren't sure in your calls then your teammates won't really be on the same page and that will cause you to lose fights now that is why it's typically the entry fragger that is the IGL because their confidence and the IGL's confidence go hand in hand but you can do it on other roles as well some teams do have the support as the IGL because they're in the back line not as focused on the smaller details of the fight so that frees their mind up to think of other things. But it is all based on who you as a team trust enough to lead you to victory, so just pick somebody like that. But also, finding a role 
can be a little tough. There are some times where a character that you play doesn't fit into the role where you want to be. Like for example, Octane cannot be a support, Watson can't be an entry fragger. There are limitations to what some characters do and if you play a character in the wrong role, then you're going to be losing out on a lot of their usefulness. And also on the flip side, sometimes characters just straight up don't fit into a role at all. The best example of this is Mirage. He doesn't really have any role on the team. He technically does fit as a secondary fragger, but he doesn't have the usual abilities that a secondary fragger does. But other than Mirage, all the legends do have a role that they fit into. So no matter who you play, you will be able to find a role that best matches them. But if the character that you play doesn't really fit into the role that you want to play, it is either best to switch your role or switch your character. Don't try to force them into a spot that they don't actually work in. But now I have a question for you guys, the community. What role do you play or do you want to play? You guys already know that I'm a support player for my team, so let me know yours down in the comments below. And with all this being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If you did and you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest Apex Legends tips, tricks, and news, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Once again, I'm 8 Second Gaming, and I will see you in the next one.